Hello, everyone, and welcome to our choice event. My name is Florian, and I'm the communication lead at The Climate Choice, and I'm very happy to welcome you to our 42nd episode of our series. As a little reminder, we organized the choice event in order to inform you every second Thursday during the lunch break about best practice solutions for your climate transformation. Some people are still joining, so I'll start slowly and first introduce you to how we'll be organizing this choice event. First of all, you should know that we are recording this webinar. This way you will be able to watch the talk again afterwards on YouTube. We use the webinar function of Zoom, which means that you can see me and Andrea uh, later on, our speaker, but we cannot see you. In order to still have a lively discussion with you, there are two ways to communicate with us. The easiest way is to post a question or a comment here down in the chat window, and also to vote up the questions or comments of others with a like. Right now, I would like to invite you to test the chat window um, by just writing hello and telling us from where you are currently joining the webinar. Uh, yeah, so that would be great if you could just uh, write this in the chat. So I'll wait a few seconds until we have the first greetings so that we know that it works. Very good, India, the first one from Germany. Hi, Alejandra. <laughs> okay, very good. I guess more will follow. Very good from Berlin. Nice, thanks for that. And yeah, we use the chat tool also to collect your questions during the presentation of Andrea so that um, she can then answer them at the end of the webinar in a final Q&A round that I will moderate. The second feature uh, that we can use to communicate is our Slack group. And you have all been invited to this group by email in advance. And here you also have the chance to ask questions to the speaker or also just to connect afterwards. Yeah, and as the last background information for you, very shortly, who are we, The Climate Choice? We have made it our mission to support companies in their climate transformation. And therefore, we are building the climate intelligence platform for streamlining, managing, and reporting climate-relevant data. How does it work? First, we use our climate performance assessment to help companies find out where they stand in their own climate transformation. This climate rating software tool collects both qualitative and quantitative data on a company's climate performance in five different dimensions. And in this way, companies can discover fields of action and potential they have to improve and implement decarbonization measures. But uh, the whole thing doesn't stop at your own company. And we all know that scope three, that means the supply chain emissions, which is also um, a very important topic today, account for the most. That's why we also offer the climate data platform, which is a software tool to help you work more closely with your suppliers to collect data and implement decarbonization measures together along the, the entire supply chain. And if you want to learn more about how companies can use climate data to work together with their supply chain on the climate transformation, I can um, yeah, very shortly recommend you to check out our very new best practice guide that we actually published just this week. It um, summarizes the key learnings and statements from our climate transformation summit that we organized in June this year and where over 50 international experts share their insights with over 1,000 attendees. And yeah, my colleague Enya uh, is uh, so nice to share uh, right now the link um, to the best practice guide in the chat window. So you will be able to download it if and whenever you want to. So now back to our topic, uh, the decarbonization of the logistics industry. 
In a few moments, Andrea Gülman will share her insights about this topic with us. But to give her first an impression of who is with us today, we have uh, prepared a small survey that I will now show you. And the questions this time are actually more about your personal opinion. That's why I'm especially curious about what you will answer. So the first question is about the transparency in supply chains. So we want to ask you, what's your opinion? How important is transparency and for how long has it been, if so, if for how long has it been important um, in global supply chains? Do you think it has that uh, the importance has increased in the recent years with the pandemic, with the war, with everything that happened in the recent years? Do you think it has always been very important? Or do you think, of course, it's important, but generally most people overestimate uh, the importance of transparency? Very good, a very active community. Um, I'm already seeing your answers coming in. I will give you a couple, uh, yeah, two more seconds to put in your answer. And now I will close the survey and I will show the results. So yeah, um, I guess it's not very surprising that uh, none of you uh, said that the importance is overestimated. Um, all of you think that it's very important. And yeah, um, most of you think it has always been important, but also quite a few of you uh, think that it has increased in the recent years. I think, uh, yeah, very good insight here for Andrea as well. Um, then we have the second question, which is about the role of logistics in climate transformation. So we want to know from you um, to what extent you think uh, logistics must move in the direction of climate protection. So there are actually only two options. Do you think um, they are es particularly essential to the climate transformation more than other uh, sectors and they must lead the way? Or do you think that, of course, they're important for climate transformation, but they are equally important to it than any other um, sector and has the same responsibility? Very good. Also, again, very many answers already coming in. And yeah, I will close it. Last chance now. And yeah, this is also interesting. Uh, almost the same um, uh, distribution of answers. So uh, a few more people think that uh, it is actually more important and uh, the logistics companies uh, should lead the way. So thanks a lot for your answers. And with that, I um, now invite and Andrea to come to the stage to um, turn on the camera. Very good. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Lorraine. Can you see me? Yes. Yes, I can see okay. and I can hear you. <laughs> and yeah, I will um, now end uh, presenting my slides. And yeah, I'm very happy that you're here with us today. I hope the, the answers already gave you some good uh, insights about um, our audience today. And yeah, I will turn off my camera now and I'm uh, very happy to listen to your presentation and I will be back in the end for our Q&A round. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Florian and uh, the Climate Choice team for inviting us or inviting me um, and from DB Schenker, I think logistics or overall the topic of um, supply chains is, is very um, common in, in the discussions these days. Also, some of you might be in, in contact with some of uh, um, the restrictions or the disruptions currently going on. And I think that's great that you're interested in hearing like our company strategy towards um, climate change and sustainability in general. So my name is Andrea and I'm um, already active since many years in the logistics industry um, and have been held several um, different positions also in operations and also in like um, um, sales, but um, also have been working on the topic of sustainability since um, over 10 years. So it's, it's quite interesting how we are also involving in, in this regard in the whole industry now. So I will share my presentation and also happy to answer your questions later on. 
<laughs> okay. So I hope you can see that. Um, first of all, um, I, I really like the, the panel uh, that you just answered and also um, the, the topic of transparency. So I think for us as a very old company, so DB Schenker is um, celebrating its 150 year anniversary uh, this year. It's really uh, important to create the overall um, transparency on uh, sustainability first as a baseline for, for this whole business or industry transformation that it's currently needed and also going on. So I think this is a very good um, start for our discussion today. So first I would like to introduce you uh, to the drivers. So why is um, sustainability in our business, um, in uh, logistics and global logistics so important? Why is it so high on our agenda? So we as DB Schenker, you know, we are a global company. We have over 75,000 employees worldwide. We operate globally. So why is this topic so important for us? Yeah. So, you know, we have a lot of um, external factors influencing our business right now. <coughs> of course, since the pandemic, since 2020, we are facing huge struggles. Also, for example, right now, still port closure, closures, also, our colleagues in China and other countries really um, being in, um, affected by the COVID situation still. Yeah? Then, of course, labor strikes, equipment shortages, not even having the right um, uh, material equipment available at any time. This is a huge um, challenge for us as a global operator to, to deliver the goods from A to B at, uh, at the yeah, defined or agreed time for other customers. Also, we have the topic of weather extremes, and this is a huge risk also for our business and also our customers. So in some countries, as you might know, the, the, the Pakistan flooding, the monsoon situation right now, but also the extreme heat or wildfires um, are hugely affecting uh, global so, uh, supply chains as well. Of course, we are also preparing for um, CO2 regulations, like not only CO2 trade, like really putting a price tag on, on the CO2 emissions, but also preparing for other regulations when it comes to the European taxonomy, when it comes to the non-financial um, ESG reporting. And also already next year, we are based in Germany, um, also, um, the, the topic of um, Lieferkettengesetz, that means the supply chain law in, in Germany, that we, we are um, like um, assessing our, our whole business in regards to human rights um, violation, also environmental impacts towards our employees, but also towards all our suppliers. And then we have the topic of of course, especially here in Europe right now, the high um, energy prices and the, the very high freight costs here. Yeah? So this is also a huge impl um, implication on the global trade and hugely affecting the global supply chains after all. So we um, have implemented um, a sustainability strategy um, since um, last year and the framework I will Give you more insights on this later on and um, this is just the background information why it's also important for us as a very traditional uh, company uh, to act on this topic as well i don't so, want to interrupt you but just a very short hint that you uh, could um, change the presentation also to the full screen very ah good. now we go here now. we go yeah now it's <laughs> thanks that's it better thank you florian yeah so um, why are we doing this? Again, we have the external factors, as I just mentioned, and the tra uh, transport sector overall is uh, uh, one of the top four largest global emission sources worldwide for, for CO2 emissions and also CO2 e emissions. Yeah? So if we really could um, decarbonize the whole um, transport sector, we would reduce uh, global emissions by over 10%. So we see our responsibility here, not only SDB Schenka, but I, I also talk to many of our suppliers and also other logistics companies that really see the urge of us to act in this regard as well. So it's, it's the whole industry that really needs to act now. So let me introduce you to our um, DB Schenker 
strategy towards climate change or towards ESG. You might know the ESG terminology is very much in discussion these days, but we based on the our strategic framework on the topic of um, environmental, social and governance, but also on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And I will go a little bit more into detail about that later. So this framework, which was established in the last year, really helps us and to drive the sustainability agenda forward into our company together with our partners. So what do we want to achieve or what, what are our levers here in, in regards to sustainability? So you can see in the middle, we have three building blocks when it comes to sustainability. We have in the middle clean logistics, so reducing our overall impact of our operations in, in, in logistics. And um, this is really um, going into our, our product level. We'll give you a little bit more insight later and also um, on, on our own assets, yeah? Then we have the social part, the thriving communities. This is like really how can we improve the lives of our employees and of their communities overall. And also because we cannot do it alone, we, we have the shared value pillar. So really um, focusing on creating sustainable value for our customers, but also creating that together with our global partners. So this is also, you see it um, the way around. You see our global partnerships are really essential to reach our sustainability goals, yeah? And we are coming uh, from the topic of um, environment in the logistics industry. So in the past 10, 15 years, we were focused a lot on reducing CO2, CO2E, but right now we focused really on this holistic approach on environmental, social, and governance. So this is um, something we kind of rewent in the last year. And also we, we need to make this topic, of course, tangible for the whole organization. This is um, essential. So we linked um, our framework um, to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. As you all know, we, we, um, the, the SDGs have been defined by the United Nations and we are supporting all 17 of these goals. But we have defined four of them as our real mission SDGs. So really being essential for our business transformation here. So you see on the clean logistics side, driving climate action. This is like really our mission really uh, being active in this field to reduce emissions overall. On the social part, we see our main responsibility in the fair work opportunities for all employees, wherever they live on the world. So really um, being a good employer and providing really good and fair working conditions for all our employees. On the right side, you see the sustainable solutions development. So together and for our customers, we want to um, develop new product alternatives that are really sustainable, not just um, some product labeling on it, but really creating sustainable values for, for us and also for the customers. And we cannot do it alone, of course, partnering for the goals is essential as of course, um, we, we do a lot ourselves, but we can only do it together with the whole industry, with the customer side and together with the um, with our carriers as well. So I hope that gives you a good overview. Then let us um, let us um, go next into our targets. So DB Schenker has an overarching goal to achieve carbon neutrality, not, uh, not only 2050, but we made it now a little bit earlier. Um, also together with our uh, parent company, Deutsche Bahn, we committed to uh, reach carbon neutrality by 2040. How do we want to go for it? So we want to reduce scope one to three emissions until the year 2030 in a significant way. So we are focusing on reducing overall emissions per all transport mode, so air, ocean, land, transport and also rail transport, but especially we want to reduce on road transport here in Europe because we have a lot of own assets here and we are investing heavily in, for example, electric trucks, now even hydrogen trucks. 
and we want to go for 100% uh, renewable energy in our building sector. So wherever we have offices, warehouses, or um, yeah, other logistics buildings, we want to go until um, 2030 for 100% um, renewable uh, building electricity. Of course, we, we are compliant with, uh, with the 1.5 um, degree SBTI target. We, com uh, we committed to this target and also committing, of course, to the ambitious goals for the Fit for uh, 55 EU directive and all, all other um, um, EU directives and also global directives. So for us as a logistics company and also for the industry, it's of, of course essential to, to exit fossil fuels. No? And we'll go, dive into this topic a little bit later on. So what's already available right now today? And you can see this. there's also a ramp up phase. So we're really on our way to, to um, explore all the new technologies. Some of them are really available already right now. Some of them are not available right now. So this, uh, this time, as mentioned before, we are already focusing on sourcing out fossil fuels wherever possible, for example, in our energy purchase and also um, in purchasing new technologies, for example, hydrogen trucks, um, electric vehicles for the last mile delivery and also for longer deliveries because these, these trucks are more and more available from the um, suppliers as well. And we are heavily investing in, in it, not only in Europe, but also in other countries, for example, Latin America or China or other countries in, in, in Asia. So our colleagues worldwide are really committed to, to go this way together with us. In the fields of um, air freight and ocean freight, um, we are committed to, to reduce also emissions or like source out um, biofuels or um, crude oil through alternatives like biofuel, um, like ZAF, that means sustainable aviation fuel, and um, also offer sustainable products for our customers. If they really want to decarbonize their, their supply chains in regards to air freight, for example, we have um, created a special product in this regard. Yeah? And uh, when we look a little bit more uh, on the horizon, we see in the year 2030, really the, the e-fuels, really um, new, new, new sorts of fuels produced um, with renewable energies as a new solution. But this is at the moment uh, only um, very, very lim limited available, but we are looking very much forward to this new development as well. So I think some of you are really uh, climate experts, but um, just to um, give you uh, an overview again, what our, uh, are our emission scopes? Um, of course, um, we have the scope one emissions really from our own fuel combustion, from our own um, vehicles. And this is scope one emissions. Scope two emissions are, is the electricity we purchase for our buildings or also our uh, warehouses, for example. And scope three emissions is the lever where we also find um, um, both upstream and downstream processes from the, from the energy, from the greenhouse gas emissions, yeah? So, um, for us as DB Schenker, we, we are um, heavily emitting in the scope three emissions. And this is the biggest leverage also for us to really reduce emissions sustainable in a sustainable way. Yeah? So this is like, can also for our customers, most of the time the scope three emissions are really the uh, offering the, the most significant um, reduction potentials. <coughs> So what are, what are we exactly doing now in this regard? We can talk a lot about targets, about our commitments, et cetera. But for, for us, it's important to really um, drive this forward with real actions, yeah? So uh, we as DB Schenker, um, we have the following modes we specialize on. We have the land transport network. So the regular DB Schenker truck, you might know from the speed in some countries. 
We have air freight together with our um, partners, like the airlines. We have ocean freight together with the big shipping lines. And we operate also buildings where we sort or like um, 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 do value added services in our own warehouse space. This is called contract logistics. <coughs> when it comes to um, emissions, we have different uh, options to really reduce emissions in the yeah, scope three emissions. So what we uh, prefer is really the insetting um, alternative. So we cannot always at the moment with the limited technology available, we cannot always like completely um, um, decarbonize our supply chains at the moment. But we really focus on insetting. That means we really buy alternatives for the regular fossil fuels and give them into the, the transport system, the fuel system of the operator. And the, the advantage of this solution is from our perspective, really a reduction that can be claimed for a specific transport. So can we really claim for a transport and uh, really make the whole system uh, better? Of course, it's, it's a little bit hard to understand for some, some of our customers and also some of our colleagues that are not so familiar with this topic. But you all know that offsetting, like buying um, carbon credits, it's, all, it's the other option. But um, it's cost-wise, it's, of course, um, easier maybe to implement that. Or, and, and you see, like, immediate um, results. It's, it's not so, so, so um, like, um, difficult to explain that somehow or difficult to explain the project. But it's... it's, it's our, uh, our first choice is always in setting because it's just not project based. It makes the whole system really better, the logistics system. Offsetting is only an additional um, lever when it comes also to the carbon zero targets when the technology is not there, for example. So what have we done or what have we achieved already when it comes to um, electrification of, of our transport? And you might see uh, some of our trucks in the city centers all over Europe, also some cargo bikes. You can see we have already in 14 countries all across Europe, um, great uh, cargo bikes, um, e-trucks um, on the road. And this is um, really helping the cities to become greener. Some of you might know that, for example, in Paris, France, the Olympics uh, um, are coming up in the next, I think in, in two years. And uh, therefore the city center will be like only um, accessible with e-trucks. So no more um, diesel trucks in the city center of Paris. And these kind of develops, uh, developments of course uh, cause uh, ch um, challenges for us as a logistics provider, but also is a huge challenge to really drive this topic forward. Um, together with the cities, together with um, our partners and customers in the city limits, yeah? And this is a good development we see in many countries, and especially our, our, our colleagues in the Nordics countries are also very active around the topic of sustainability, also because there's a huge availability of um, green energy, of course, in these countries. Um, we have a huge commitment to, towards buying these new te technologies and implementing them in our, um, yeah, in our business. So um, in, the, in the course of the year, we will um, have the first Volta truck uh, on the road. So Volta Trucks is a startup. It's like a great company that are really pioneering um, new, uh, new way of trucking, I would say. Um, the, the Volta truck is, looks a little bit like a bus, you, uh, also very attractive for the driver. So not, not, not the classical um, uh, truck you might know from the, from the road. It has a limited um, range at the moment. So only 150 to 200 kilometers. And it's not so um, uh, large capacity wise. But it's still, from my perspective, a great alternative for the last mile delivery when it comes from the, to the delivery to the um, city um, store or to the city cl close by factory. It's really a great, um, great uh, option to deliver the goods carbon neutral also into cities like Paris, 
um, they are uh, they are allowed to go go into this uh, city. So we we will um, drive some pilots. Uh, with Volta trucks all across Europe, and hopefully um, these trucks will also be available one day on other continents. Yeah, so this is really a, a, a big commitment from our um, organization. We are also having a, a sustainable aviation fuel network. So this slide might look a little bit um, complicated, but it's really about um, decarbonizing air freight. So we have a um, carbon neutral flight operation. So we have a weekly flight going from Frankfurt um, to Shanghai and back. And some of our customers can uh, or are buying extra um, stuff, uh, stuff within this, uh, this flight network. Yeah, so they don't have to, but customers that really want to go the way with us can decarbonize their air freight together with us because we're buying um, enough stuff um, to, to, to be able to, to uh, offer them a pool of stuff so they can get a TÜV certificate with their air freight shipment. Yeah? Of course, air freight is a big emitter when it comes to global transport emission. But right now, the SAF uh, product is the only way to really go forward and decarbonize air freight. Yeah? So there are different models available. So the, uh, our shippers can, for example, take only the 10% um, CO2 reduction, but they can also like go completely carbon zero with their air freight. But, but of course, it comes with an extra cost at the moment, yeah, because it's very limited availability of this fuel. Um, we have the same for ocean freight. So, you know, container vessels, it's like ocean transport. And we have the same, we have like a, a pool of um, biofuels with the, with the highest um, quality. So um, you can choose your preferred lane and the, the biofuel is then allocated by our ocean freight experts um, towards this, um, this special shipment. And the colleagues um, also issue certificates for the CO2 reduction and this can go uh, can be reduced from the overall um, carbon footprint of this company then, yeah? So the certification uh, process is still in ongoing for this product, but will also be TRIF certified. Another topic I would like to bring up today, and it's really important to me, is the topic of um, um, circular economy. This is uh, not only focused on one, one of our <coughs> excuse me, one of our transport modes, it's really focused on the whole logistics supply chain, yeah? So um, you might, you, you all know that our resources are limited and um, different approaches towards the use of products have to be defined, yeah? Also in, uh, not only here in Europe, but on a global uh, scale. So we really want to, um, focus on this, uh, this solution together with our customers. So how can we like circle back um, the goods or like the resources into their natural ecosystems or also bring it back to our customers so the goods can be reduced in their supply chain again. No? The other top op option is of course to recycle, to really um, use the waste in the best way possible, not just burn it, but possibly also like scrap it and use it again in the production process. That's also possible. And also like repairing of goods when it comes to, for example, electrical goods or other um, yeah, um, digital products. Yeah. So um, we can assess these, uh, these kinds of goods, um, repair it, refurbish it, and the customer can even resell this type of goods, yeah? And really enable access to, to these goods again. This is a whole very complicated uh, supply chain. It's like um, uh, we have a lot of steps in the circular economy and there's like a lot of uncertainty also from my perspective, like um, not all companies know already how to implement circular economy in their supply chains. But I think it's a it's a, a way we we as an industry need to go together, yeah, to really implement this this kind of transports into 
into the, the industries, yeah. So um, today, uh, especially we are, we are in Germany, or I'm located in Germany, it's uh, the focus is, is more on the linear um, economy. Yeah? So um, you see on the left side that global resource use uh, quadrupled in 50 years, up to 100 billion tons um, raw material extraction annually. And these are just huge numbers, yeah? So um, the global material productivity has also declined by 0.1% per year. So the, also the production uh, effectivity has, has declined. And we, you all know that you are sustainability experts or are very interested in these topics. We, we currently use resources as if we had 1.7 Earth. Yeah? And you all know the country specific um, 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 overshoot days, etc. cetera. They're, they're getting earlier and earlier every year. So it's like really important to, to dive deeper into this topic of um, circular economy. And we as DB Schenker see ourselves also as, uh, um, as an enabler for this topic. Yeah, we don't have our own production, but uh, we can help customers really to, to implement these processes in their supply chain. And this is like a huge chance for us as well. And also the recycling topic is of course huge because our, our operations also, we use a lot of, um, uh, we, we produce a lot of ways and really finding uh, better packaging, better, um, yeah, re, um, recycle um, solutions there, yeah. So lastly, I would like to uh, um, dive deep into like a few um, business cases. What can we um, measure when it comes to really one specific um, um, transport can, uh, can go a little bit uh, into this operational cases per mode because we, I introduced you to air, ocean, land transport, but what can we do in the special field, yeah? So here you see, on the left side, you can see like a very uh, scattered uh, picture, yeah? So when you really not organize your transport properly, that you've sent, uh, sent the goods from one locations or from different locations to one uh, factory in, within Europe, it, it can look very scattered if you don't do it like in a very harmonized way. Um, but you can see in the, on the right side, maybe when you really organize it or like do a consultation uh, together with us, um, you can also source the goods from different factory and really save a lot of transport, yeah? And may have more efficient uh, projects and uh, more efficient uh, supply chains, yeah? So this is something that is most, most of the time uh, a longer assessment, but can help really to save emissions and to uh, structure the production processes better. Here you can see um, that, uh, that also the, the option of rail transport is very um, good when it comes to the environment. So here we see a block trains uh, from Austria to Southeast Europe. And um, the shift from uh, um, trucking from land transport to rail um, was able to reduce like 75% of CO2. So this is a, also a big lever. Um, of course, the quality and the availability of rail uh, freight has to be given. Uh, but when the lane is like defined and there's a good quality available, it's of course a very good option to, to go towards rail um, transport as well. Also here the same. Uh, so this is an ocean freight uh, shipment coming uh, into the US and there you can also see that the on carriage with rail and with road um, is also um, saving a lot of uh, um, um, uh, emissions um, and the ocean freight. You can see that on the left side is of course a very, very uh, less um, CO2 emitting compared to air freight. So for some of our um, customers, it might be uh, the biggest leverage to, for example, switch from air freight to ocean freight Yeah, when it comes to transatlantic or transpacific um, supply chains. 
And here you can see also um, for an overseas uh, transport going from, uh, from Germany, from Nuremberg, Germany, um, via port to um, Shanghai. So uh, very long way, of course, but it's, it's a normal uh, route for ocean freight. But here you can see the, the trucking to a port in Italy, to Trieste, might, might, might make sense because the way through, throughout Southeast A uh, Europe and then going to Shanghai is much shorter compared to the way um, um, via Hamburg. So this is just a very simple advantage to reduce um, CO2 by a shorter way of transport. And here you can see um, that there's also a, a, a reduction possible by the air freight type. You, you know that uh, there are different, um, yeah, bigger, smaller planes. Also um, some, some cargo, some air freight cargo might go within normal passenger planes, so-called belly freight. But here um, um, CO2 can really be reduced by taking a different, more efficient um, aircraft type. Yeah? So this is um, also a big leverage when it comes to global air freight, of course. And last but not least, our warehouse space. Um, here we, we are really focusing on uh, renewable warehousing, really um, introducing renewable um, techniques such as um, solar panel, but also um, LEDs in, for the lighting in, in the warehouses. Also, this gives our, our colleagues in the warehouse a better working in, environment, really have a good insulation. Also, when it comes to um, energy saving measures now, now it's, it's really important topic and really educating our, our colleagues also about this topic. Of course, packaging is very important topic. You might also receive a lot of um, packages from online shopping. So you, you all know this is an important topic. We as a logistics industry, but also the producing uh, companies need to focus on the topic of optimized packaging or even reuse packaging. So this is also a big lever and also re proper recycling of this paper and packaging material. Um, and then we also have the innovation topics, for example, um, the digital tools. We have, for example, um, v VR uh, glasses that can be used in the warehouse space to train our colleagues there, for example, for forklift driving, but also to allow our colleagues to um, vi uh, virtually visit the warehouse. So they don't have to travel there anymore. They can really virtually assess the warehouse and it's really great for our customers and also for for our yeah for our teams to to visit the this, this sites virtually okay so i thank you very much for your attention this was a lot of detail on uh, global logistics i hope you enjoyed um yeah the short presentation and you might um, contact me with any questions of course you can see my email address below and yeah i'm open for questions now yes and i'm back uh, here so thanks thanks a lot also from my side from for the very very interesting very insightful presentation um maybe you can even leave leave the, the last slide on sure. because uh, there was actually one question already that i can already answer <laughs> uh, this is um of course uh, um someone asked about your slides and if we can mm -hmm. share them and the answer is that you can uh, directly contact uh, Andrea and uh, you can use it, uh, use the, the email address that you see there. Sure. And then uh, she will take care of it and share and be, be happy to, to share it with you directly. Of course, yeah. Yeah, very open. Also, if you have any follow up questions, um, please contact me and uh, we can discuss it in detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, so um, as uh, as mentioned, this is now the, the, the chance um, for you to, um, or it's, it's your last chance to uh, um, post your questions in the in the chat window. I've, I've already scanned the, the ones that, that have been posted here so far, so I will start with them. But yeah, we still have uh, 15 minutes, so uh, yeah, still more chances for new questions. 
Um, but yeah, but let's start uh, with actually a combination of two. So um, you already, um, uh, yeah, said a lot about uh, scope three emissions and your approach to to tackle um, scope three. And and there was one, one question that that uh, really um, uh, tackled this um, this scope. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe you can uh, again clarify um, or summarize, or maybe even uh, give another example. Uh, what your approach is there, and um, this is actually uh, this. Uh, um, there's a good combination with a, with another question where someone asked about um, how you engage suppliers, because I think that's mm -hmm. of course the most important uh, part there. And uh, in this um, aspect, uh, especially uh, subcontracted carriers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, good question. And um, this all comes together here with our business model. So we don't operate our own um, vessels, for example, nor own um, uh, airplanes. And also we, we purchase some uh, a lot of transport um, services from, from providers. So in, in regards to um, really assessing our suppliers towards sustainability or their sustainability strategy that it matches towards our goals, this is like a yearly um, assessment we make. So our product colleagues um, are assessing and talking to the suppliers because some of them, of course, they have big volumes with us and really um, um, engaging with them very, very regularly. Yeah? And this is very important that we not, not only um, access our own fleet or investing in our own uh, new vehicles, but really talking to our suppliers that they go this way together with us. Yeah, So um, we have uh, around 95% scope three emission. That's no secret. This is like all um, our peers uh, are having the same and also many of our, our shippers of our customers are also heavy on um, scope three emissions. So um, there we have the biggest leverage and therefore we, we need to um, interact very, very closely with our suppliers. And therefore I can only say that uh, we also encourage um, this developments that for example, with the new supply chain law I mentioned earlier, that, that really monitoring the suppliers and really engaging with them, accessing also possible risks is really key to our, uh, our climate strategy as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And, and here also insetting comes in, if, if, I, if I understood correctly, right? Maybe you have another example uh, for that. In setting, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in setting is, uh, I, as I mentioned, the SAF is, is a good example, but also the the biofuel pro, uh, process in in uh, in uh, ocean freight, yeah. And also we we are talking to other providers when it comes to uh, to land transport because that's like a little bit more difficult. Um, we we uh, of course most um, most uh, trucks you see on the road are uh, diesel trucks, regular diesel trucks, yeah. And therefore, uh, we also access what kind of alternative do we have when we define, for example, special uh, bio lanes with really alternative um, uh, fuels also in the land transport sector. This is not so easy because um, the, the um, infrastructure is not there. Uh, like you, you, don't, you don't see these um, big uh, hydrogen uh, uh, fueling stations, for example, at the moment. We hope this is a development. And if we have our um, first trucks, high hydrogen trucks on the road, this is also pushing then the, the, the infrastructure and also the fuel providers to, towards creating this um, infrastructure. And uh, this is, uh, there I see also the, the politics here as a, as, a, as a key player towards pushing this topic uh, further, yeah? So there's, infrastructure will be available hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Um, you already mentioned one example for a biofuel, which would be hydrogen, uh, but there was actually uh, this exact question. So what kind of biofuels being used and are there any other kinds that... Uh, that yeah, can... so let me just give you the example uh, for um, for um, ocean freight product, we use uh, Yukomi. So this is like um, used cooking oil, uh, biofuel, but this is uh, the highest um, quality uh, without uh, any palm oil or without any like uh, food uh, um, 
food conflicting uh, production. Yeah, so this is very important. Also, I know other companies are really scaling up these uh, sustainable products, but for us, it's like really the the quality of the fuel is is really key to us that that there are no no conflict because also our um, customers are very sensitive to to really buying the the highest quality of biofuels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But also, I can answer any detailed questions uh, later on. Yeah, it's a complicated topic. I know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, and another uh, technological question um, now about the battery for the Volta trucks that you um, that you presented. Um, one uh, one attendee uh, pointed out that uh, a very uh, important aspect there is the uh, the lifetime of the batteries. And so, so um, uh, yeah, so uh, companies should really focus on operation and maintenance um, activities for those batteries. So uh, the question would be, how are you approaching this or what are your plans? Yeah, so uh, we have to learn a lot in this regard, I think. Also, not only Volta trucks, but also the other OEMs, the other uh, truck uh, operators, the producers. What happens when there's an accident, for example, or what happens if the the um, truck breaks and the battery is not usable anymore. Can this battery be um, kind of repaired or uh, given back to the life cycle or even used like a, as a energy storage um, possibility? This is something that, that the future will show. But um, our um, supplier here in this case, Volta Trucks, you can see also on this picture, is um, building up like special um, centers where they will repair these trucks because of course there has to be a maintenance for this truck and also um, where they will recycle, for example, these batteries. Yeah, so this is very important to us. This is whole battery process is also sustainable and transparent for us as a uh, customer. Yeah, and I know this is like a very conflicting and a highly discussed topic. How are these batteries produced and how are they recycled? No? So, so for us, um, uh, it's, it's really important because there's of course a limited um, life cycle of these batteries. Yeah? But we, will, we work on that together with our um, um, carriers, with our um, partners here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, with those uh, new batteries and those new um, technology, uh, there comes another question, which is um, if there are any specific challenges that you had and have to overcome when transitioning, transitioning from the old to the new technology. Yeah, so we are really uh, still in progress. It's like not uh, the journey is uh, just uh, has just begun from my perspective. So um, really, um, Uh, making sustainability part of our whole um, business model. I think we already achieved a lot at DB Schenker and really have the commitment of our CEO and top management to, to drive this topic. Uh, but it's still a lot of uncertainties when it comes to, I just mentioned, infrastructure, for example, and the very large availability of new technologies also when it comes to ships and also to um, Uh, planes, yeah. So there's a lot, long way to go for us as a whole industry. So, yeah, I think it's it's a transformation process, and it's it's important to create transparency first, and then really um, go further and further with this transformation. So it's it's an exciting journey, and uh, offers a lot of chances. But of course, we also face the challenges here, yeah. And it also comes with an extra price, of course, no. But um, it's, it's a very interesting field and um, you can see that, that there is a lot, a lot being done already in the logistics industry, but um, together with, with our shippers, with our partners, we can really achieve um, our targets here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for this answer. And now there's actually even more interest on the um, scope three topic and on the subcontract. <coughs> So there are actually two more questions uh, that go more in specifics there. So the first one would be um, if you have a CO2 reduction plans, targets or a roadmap that you um, share with your subcontractors. And as an add-on, um, if you also have incentives uh, in place for, for them to, to, to reduce their, their emissions. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we share, of course, our, our targets with, with our um, with our subcontractors or with our carriers. This is no secret. And uh, we have the ambitious target to go um, carbon neutral um, uh, in regards to um, incentives. That's a very good point. Um, and I would say we don't have special incentives, but if a, a, a supplier in the long term uh, doesn't comply with our targets or let's say with our roadmap towards um, our carbon neutrality and carbon reduction uh, targets. There, there's like um, there might be some implications for the business relationship. So I, I think we have to to work very closely and very uh, like a partner together. Otherwise, it's just not not possible to, to reach these targets together. Yeah, and it's not only us that that have uh, not the, only Divyshenka that set these targets, but also many other co companies. So there's also a risk. Of not not going this this way together with with the, with the whole industry, yeah. So I, I think um, we we need, really need to prepare for that together, and it's not not possible to not start the journey now, yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm. yeah also, co collaboration is really the the key, also, in, in other um, sectors for um, exactly yeah. measures. Okay. Um, yeah, we are approaching uh, the end um, of our time slowly, so that's why I want to um, summarize uh, with the last question to you, which is, uh, yeah, just um, if there's uh, one statement or one sentence that you want to um, give give everyone, uh, um, uh, what would be the first thing that they should do after this webinar? Other Oh, the one learning oh, of course could, um, yeah maybe we are two uh, two two points so uh, summarizing our whole um, strategic approach um, towards decarbonization in the transport sector is really be, we are on the way we are just at the beginning of the journey and it's like a long journey and uh, a lot of obstacles of course we are facing especially in the current uh, energy crisis and the current um, global situation yeah, of climate change so we are committed to go uh, this journey uh, together. And what, what might be interesting for you as a tool I can uh, show, uh, show you, uh, you can just Google, it's called Ecotransit. This is like our calculation uh, methodology when it comes to uh, um, CO2 um, calculation in, in logistics. So ecotransit.org, you can just Google it and there you can see the comparison uh, between transport modes and it's, it's a fun tool and it's a very scientific tool too. So I, I just encourage you to look into that and really just um, make some uh, example shipment for yourself. It's quite interesting. Yeah? It's also, of course, something for like cargo shipping. It's not like passenger uh, transport, yeah? but you, you know all, um, you might know the passenger tools already. So yeah, it's just a, just a yeah, hint. You, you might check it out. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, mm -hmm. Anna. That's also helpful. Then, yeah, I, I want to thank you again for your time, for all of your insights that you shared, and also for your openness to all of the questions from the audience. And yeah, also all the others, I want to thank you for the time um, that we had together. Um, we will continue the series in uh, two weeks, uh, again, with uh, our next topic, which is also supply chain decarbonization, how to um, get from data collection to concrete action. And yeah, happy to see you there again, if you want to. And yeah, other than that, I wish you a good um, and productive afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.